Good morning, it's October 8th. It's a Friday, so that means around the lake we go. Slightly damp, it rained overnight. Google said there was showers, still showers coming, but uh, the weather app on my phone says no, so don't think we'll get showered on. Looked at yesterday's uh, walk and I, I do think this uh, new camera, the iPhone 13 here Pro that I'm now using, um, I did think that maybe the, the image was a bit better than it was on the iPhone 11. It should be the same resolution. It streams at 720 and then it's 1080 when I put it up, so it's not extremely high resolution. I'm not doing anything in 4K, but still, I thought it looked a little nicer. It is heavier. I've also got a problem with my gimbal here, a charging issue, so I hope to have that sorted out and you won't notice any interruption of walks, but if for some reason I can't, there might be a short interruption in my daily walks. Good morning, Rabia. Don't have anything too pressing to do today. I think I have some tax stuff I should look after. Boring. On the writing side, there's always stuff to do on the new anthology, but it's uh, getting closer all the time. I'm fine, how are you? So there won't be too many crunchy leaves today because now they're all soggy leaves after last night. Forecast is showing it dropping down to zero a couple of days next week. So that might be our first frost finally. And on those days, it also shows potential of a dusting of snow. So it's not impossible that next week I might have my first walk with a little bit of snow in the ground. We'll see. So we'll go under the bridge, under Albert Street over here. That's looking a little sadder all the time at Hill Garden. And it hasn't been frosted yet, it's just everything's getting old. As we move toward winter. Yes, I know, officially winter doesn't start till December 21st, but around here it's effectively winter a lot sooner than that. And there's the place with the uh, Halloween decorations I walked by the other day. Morning, Miriam, in India. Caring to news, where I like to point out one of my characters in the Shards of Excalibur series lives in a fictional house, but a very real place down at the end there by the creek. None of those houses look like his, but this house would have been down there. I suppose the one at the very end would be the closest to where they, where I pictured it. Let's see if there's any... Well, there is mist, and that probably is mist and not fog, smoke, but there is smoke in the air from fires up north around Hudson Bay the town, not the geographical feature. So some of that might be early morning mist and some of it probably is smoke, like yesterday. They did have an air quality warning for us yesterday. I didn't particularly notice it, but I could smell the smoke. Here we are with the murals down here.
Okay, I think we will go... Which way will we go? Could go counterclockwise today. See more people walking around out here than I thought there might be since it's starting to get cooler. There's West Canada Lake. Either smoke or haze, hard to tell. That may be smoke. Doesn't seem to be rising off the water. There's the uh, legislative building there, of course. We'll be walking by it in a minute. Albert Street Bridge over here. They've uh, put up Canadian flags on the bridge for this month. They seem to change every month. And the lake is uh, formed by this dam here. No water going over the spillway at the moment. Because it is an artificial lake. And as I like to point out, none of these trees are, are natural. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're real trees, but they were all planted by somebody. This lake's been here a long time. It was uh, a very early feature of the city. It's been deepened a couple of times. Most recently in 2004, I think. They just completely drained it, dredged it out. It was quite the sight to see. The geese have moved. Normally there'd be geese over here, but they're not even on the lake. They all seem to be over on the other side of Broad Street because we passed a lot of them yesterday. And the lake on that side. At the moment, I don't really see a bird anywhere on the lake here, which is interesting. I don't know why they prefer that side to this side this time of the year, but apparently they do. I'm sure we'll see some, but it's quite remarkably bird-free at the moment. We'll see how the ornamental gardens are doing. They haven't been frosted, but again, it's getting late in the year for flowers, even if they haven't been frozen. Pretty still this morning for sure on the lake. You can tell the difference between the sheltered area and the part that's not by that line in the water. Cat's paws, they call the little ripples that play across open water from the wind. So we'll go up through the garden here, by the Queen's statue. Oof. Oh, well, so much for that. They've actually pulled everything out. It's done. Since the last time I came here, which was two weeks ago, because I was away last week, all the flowers are gone. Except for a few pots around Walter Scott here, the first premier. But otherwise, not a flower to be seen. It's a nice legislative building. particular reason I couldn't go in with the camera sometime, probably, but right now you'd have to have a mask and probably you always have to go by security guards and and I don't know for sure, so I don't think I'll try that. It 
It's just still got some flowers on it, but that's about it. Oh, and the roses are still blooming around the queen here. On her horse Burmese, which was uh, one of her favorite horses and was uh, Canadian, as you can see on the plaque here. Well, it doesn't say that. She says that she dedicated it on uh, May 18th, 2005, when I was standing right over here in the pouring rain with my daughter, who was not quite four. Does this one say about the horse? Yes, her favorite horse, Burmese, commemorating the golden jubilee of the accession of Her Majesty to the throne as Queen of Canada on February 6, 1952. Yeah, not just a not just a Canadian connection, but Burmese was born and raised at Fort Walsh, Saskatchewan, and was presented to Her Majesty by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in 1969. The Queen rode Burmese at the annual Trooping of the Colour until 1987, and the sculpture was also done by a Saskatchewan sculptor. There she is. So I got, to, well, I didn't. My daughter gave flowers to the Queen that day. Got a great close-up picture of the Queen. There you go. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of Canada. Well, you won't be getting your immigration from here. This is a provincial legislative building. That would be a federal responsibility. So that'd be coming from Ottawa. Where the parliament buildings are also quite spectacular, although currently under construction, so they're mostly covered with scaffolding. Center block. <clears throat> And they're going to be under construction for, I don't know, five more years or something. I'm glad I saw them before they had all that construction work being done a few years ago. Been there a couple of times, but only done the tour inside maybe twice, maybe just once, but I think twice. The dome here was completely redone <clears throat> just a couple of years ago. So for a while, that dome was shiny copper, which was interesting to see. But now it has turned black, as copper does in this climate. Maybe slightly tilted to the right there, but can't do much about that. Construction site, PPE required. Now, do we go through the tennis club today? Let's not, let's just go straight over to the lake today. I definitely seem to be a little more slanted than usual. I don't know why. Yeah, I can't really adjust it. The, uh, A brief moment of that. I mean, a brief moment of that. There we go. Is that any straighter? Not really. <laughs> it is a nice building for sure. Built in 19. Opened in 1914, I think. 1912, somewhere along in there. 1910. I should know this. Oh slippery because of mud on the uh, concrete here. This is the Trafalgar Fountain, which uh, is off, like all the fountains are right now. But it used to stand in Trafalgar Square in London until 1939. It basically came over, I think, at the same time as King George and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, uh, made a visit to Canada in 1939. They came through Regina. So, 
was running earlier in the year when I came by, but everything's getting shut down for winter. We are at the lake again. Not quite as still over here because it's not as sheltered. pick up the main path here around the lake. It's about five kilometers around, at least from my house. Tower over there is uh, Roberts Plaza, which is an apartment building, and over there, that building is the uh, Connexus Art Center, which is where I started the walk yesterday. And the tennis club, which I did not walk by today, is behind those trees there. Nineteen forty-two? No. Nope. I'm not sure what that date was for, but nothing was nineteen forty-two. The legislative building was around, I think it was still under construction in 1912 when the tornado came through. So it probably opened in no earlier than that year. And the Trafalgar Fountain was definitely 1939 when it arrived here. There, that little girl standing by herself is the Holodomor Memorial, the uh, Ukrainian genocide carried out by Soviet communists under Stalin. That's what that memorializes. There's a large Ukrainian population, and Saskatchewan was the first jurisdiction that recognized that as a genocide. Yeah, the house is really handy for coming over here, going downtown. Not so handy if you want to go up to the Northwest. And all of my daughter's friends live down in the Southeast. So it's always like a 15 minute drive to get her out there, 20 minutes when she went to visit those friends. There's about four of them lived within walking distance of each other out there. And she didn't, so. Of course, now she has a driver's license. She can drive out there herself when she's home. A little thin layer of mud on the sidewalk is slipperier than ice. To be careful of it. red in that one, not in a very common color in our trees around here. We can go around this little thing. Usually there's also a, an outlet here that's part of the aeration system, but it's not running either. But it gives you a nice view of the lake from here. That's uh, Spruce Island in front of us, one of three artificial islands in the lake. That one's left completely undeveloped. So it's just uh, for birds. And we'll be headed over there next. Not just Bruce Island, but... I wonder if the waterfall's going on Pine Island. 
It was still going two weeks ago, but I don't know if it still is or not. You see it through the trees over there is the totem pole, which I've come by a few times, but won't today. Morning. There it is. That was a gift from BC to, I think they gave one to every uh, province to mark probably the centennial of BC joining Confederation. If I remember right. And that's Spruce Island over there. It's a path looking kind of romantic there because the light is turning it silver as it winds its way off through the trees. About as magical as it, this old uh, path will ever look. <laughs> song running through my head is uh, hey 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 it's just an ordinary day and it's all your state of mind at the end of the day you just got to say it's all right which is a great big sea song which is sung by Alan Doyle who as I mentioned was our host on our trip to Newfoundland with some other people for a great Canadian kitchen party and uh, that was the final song that uh, he and his band did at the um, finale concert. So, one of our favorites. Don't know why it's in my head, but it is. There's always a song in my head as I walk. I think it's something to do with the rhythm of my steps. Makes those come to mind. I discovered on that trip I walk faster than most people. <laughs> to my own devices, I was way ahead of the group. Somebody's mowing over here somewhere. There it is, mowing. Are these the old guys I usually run into when I'm walking around the lake? Probably my age, but I think of them as old guys. It's West Canada Rehab Center over there. I've walked by it many times. Nope, different group. The usual old guys always say hi. So if you hear me singing under my breath, that's the song. Now, why is there a car over there? It's not usually a car over there. It's not actually a road over there, so... Well, maybe there's a bit of one here. You know? Down the hill, such as it is.
here's the lake through the trees Downtown right over there. This little bit of monument here is for the Land Surveyors Association. Although there should be there's a few things there. I think there should be something on this front there, but I wrote the history of the Saskatchewan Land Surveyors Association. There's Pine Island. I don't, I can't tell from here, but I don't think the, I don't think the waterfall is running, but it's quite pretty along here. Well, it's quite pretty everywhere in the park, but we'll go around the, we'll go around the uh, island anyway. Well, there's some birds. There's usually some by the bridge here. Old ducks though. No geese. I wonder how they decide. The geese. How the geese decide it's not time to be over here anymore. There's one or two. I see one over on the other side. But along here, it's all ducks. Oh, nope, there's a goose. Looks like one goose and the rest are ducks. So this is bridges lined up so the legislative building is directly ahead of you when you cross it. Ducks. More ducks. <clears throat> I would hear the waterfall if it were running, so it's clearly been turned off. This building was built for the Canada Summer Games, which were held here in 2005, right after the lake was deepened. So this was for the boating events. You can see there are still boys out there marking lanes for rowing events, for the rowing club here. <clears throat> of it. Usually there's geese along here and they're all gone so they've clearly decided it's just about time to head south. Some of them probably already have. Oh wait, wait maybe I do hear the waterfall. Oh I'm hearing that. There's one goose. Nope it's off. Oh, well, well. This, this is one of the aeration features, so there's a waterfall that comes over there when it's running, but not running today. Which at least makes it drier going under here. There's another goose. So there's a handful of them over here, but not as many as there usually are in this island. Some gulls. Yeah, we were just in uh, St. John's and it, the real seagulls are bigger than our prairie gulls here and looked meaner too. <laughs> I don't know why. They just looked meaner. That's a loon, I think. Cormorant, if we have cormorants around here. But I think it was a loon. And Pine Island, because it's mostly planted in pines. Mostly.
ducks having their say. Pigeons down there too. Pigeons are everywhere all the time. Winged rats. That's what pigeons are. I see my daughter's high school is doing frozen this year. I'll have to tell her that. She's auditioned for um, high School Musical that one of the colleges at University of Toronto is doing. I think she's almost sure to be in the show. Just the question is whether she gets a big part or a small part. But she'll be happy either way. She hasn't done a show for a while and she loves theater, as do I. I haven't done a show where I actually acted a part for several years now, though. I assume I could still memorize lines. I can still memorize songs, so. I don't think my memory is going yet. Turning. I actually had auditioned for Beauty and the Beast at Persephone Theatre in Saskatoon, which I did back in 2007, last time they did it. But uh, then the pandemic hit and all that fell apart, and then they fired their artistic director, or he resigned, and there's been this huge upheaval, so I don't know. Maybe I'm... Uh, what's the next footbridge we'll be going over? Should audition for Globe too here in town. It's a start up because uh, they have a new artistic director who's never seen me. So. <sighs> I've done very few professional shows, but I've done a few. I've done two at Globe, two at Persephone, Saskatoon, used to tour with Prairie Opera, did. Uh, I've directed shows under my equity membership, so I'm a professional director as well. But it's very much a sideline. I'm primarily a writer. But I do love doing it. And I've done more for just for fun than, than through equity as a pro. A little bit of red there. In a different lifetime different alternate universe, I probably went into acting and music, and I'm probably quite broken, <laughs> worried about my future as I got older in that alternate lifetime too, because it's hard to make a living as an actor. So we started yesterday over there and walked down to the university. It all connects. I've seen quite a few little groups of people walking this morning. Still some color here. So over there is Pine Island where we just were. This is uh, the marina we're coming up to now. So if you had a boat, if you wanted to launch, you would do it here. I don't see a lot of boats on the lake, but there are some.
And there's a rowing club, more ducks. So this is a popular parking lot for people who are doing what I'm doing, but want to start from here. We'll go over here, past the marina, down by the lake still. By the boat ramp. So various little places here for getting in a boat. And that's a dragon boat sitting there. There's normally dragon boat races where local businesses will form teams and it's a big fundraiser. And they have dragon boat racing, usually in September, but what with the pandemic, that has not been happening the last couple of years. Bar Willow here. Has the city's nicest restaurant deck is up here. Because it overlooks the lake. It's another dragon boat. There's a playground down here. You can go Canada Games, West Canada Lake Center. So again, this was all developed or improved at the time of the Canada Summer Games. Uh, there's no reason to wear a mask when you're running outside by yourself. That's so silly. Well, well it looks like they're about to take some boats out here this morning. You ready to go rowing? Coming out from over there. This is where the West Canada Rowing Club hangs out, so to speak. Morning. This could be like a high school class or something, phys ed class. This time of day, that would be most likely. And we carry on. About halfway around now, a little more. Another footbridge. So this is where the other fountain normally operates. One of the other aeration fountains to keep oxygen in the water. But it's off for the winter. Little floating platform there for the rowers. And they're doing racing. And our house is directly in that direction. There's a view, kind of a viewing platform, so you can look at the uh, east end of the legislature across there. The water is still very green with algae, especially now that the fountain's not running. But it'll be frozen soon enough. Hey.
Oh, there's a tree that's still got some nice color to it. They don't all dump them at the same time. That one's hanging on. So the next, there's downtown, and then the next island up here will be Willow Island, the third of the artificial islands. And the only one you can go to easily. Well, no, Pine Island is the one. <laughs> but of the other two, the ones that are, don't have a bridge to them, it's the only one you can go to. You can rent it for picnics and things. Yes, I'll keep my eyes posted. It'd have to be a very short, very small U-boat not to have its conning tower still sitting up when it was in the lake. However, here's our ship standing ready to defend us from U-boat attacks, HMCS Queen. Oh, and by the way, Raika, Raiko. So that is actually a ship, but it's a landlocked ship but it's run as like a ship. And uh, there's another one in Saskatoon, which is uh, HMCS Unicorn. They're where the naval cadets hang out. There's Willow Island. More trees have some leaves and color left. When we were in St. John's, one of Canada's submarines was in the harbor when I got there. Uh, I looked it up, HMCS Windsor. We have four submarines. They're never all operational at the same time. Currently three of them are operational at the same time, which apparently is considered really good. Uh, it was cool to see with an armed guard standing on, on its deck. Morning. Good morning. Those are the old guys I usually run into. I think I'm still younger than at least some of them. I look younger anyway, that's the important thing. <clears throat> Here's Middle Island, you can see there's a few things over there. You want to go over and have a picnic, step around in, in a boat, which will take you over there. So Canadian U-boats were bought used from Great Britain in the 90s. And it's rare to have three of them operational at once. The Windsor was in uh, the Mediterranean for half a year a few years ago. And it's, I think they, uh, that one or another one is about to go in for more retrofitting or refitting, I should say. Because there's always new electronics and things. Apparently it's with a submarine if they're operational 50% of the time, you're doing well because of all the constant work that has to be done on them. I saw on the news that a US fast attack submarine ran into something underwater. I'm not saying what it was. Or maybe they don't know what it was. Uh, not seriously damaged, at least it was still operational, didn't sink. It makes you very curious exactly what it was it ran into. It 
UFO, unidentified floating object. Another popular parking lot. And of course, I always have to stop here because this is where my Charge of Excalibur series begins. The Lady of the Lake from King Arthur shows up in that patch of water right there. And a local girl named Darianne Forsyth hears singing, which tracks her to the water, and there's a staircase going down into the water. And that's where she finds the Lady of the Lake. Or an avatar of the Lady of the Lake, all made out of water. And the lady tells her that she has the power of the Lady of the Lake now, if she wants it. Which, among other things, allows her to travel through fresh water. And that she and this boy, who happens to come along just in time to see the staircase and go down there with her, uh, have to go find, if they choose to accept the quest, which obviously they do, or there would be no five-book series, um, to go find the scattered shards of Arthur's sword Excalibur from around the world before Rex Major can. And Rex Major is actually Merlin in a modern day guise, having been freed from centuries of imprisonment at the whim of a sorceress. And now he wants to reforge Excalibur, use it to seize control of the earth and then use earth's armed forces to invade his own world of fairy and reclaim it and rule it. So that's Charge of Excalibur. Five books. Lots of Regina content and Canadian content in them. So the first one, Song of the Sword, takes place here and in the Northwest Territories, largely. Yellowknife and at a diamond mine. Uh, book two, Twist of the Blade, takes place here and in southern France. Uh, book three, Lake in the Clouds, takes place here and in uh, New Zealand. Also quite a bit up around Prince Albert. Book four, there's the college building over there. Hello. My pleasure. Oh. Uh, book four is called uh, Cave Beneath the Sea. It takes place here and in British Columbia and in the Caribbean. In the book five, Torn to Ferry, takes us to Scotland and then finishes up here in Saskatchewan. And at the end of it all, Excalibur is thrown into West Canada Lake, so if you're wondering where that sword is, it's just to the west of Willow Island. It is, of course, magically hidden, however, so you won't be able to find it with a metal detector. Not sure they're building the new West Canada Pool over there. Hey, hey Joe. Aho. <laughs> I still don't know how to pronounce it. Ajo. So getting close back to the bridge and then it's just a short jaunt home and this will be done for today. There's the bridge, very, very long bridge. It goes over a very, very small bit of water. Sometimes called the world's longest bridge over the shortest body of water, but I don't think that's an official Guinness Book of World Records category. <laughs> well, there's a good chance it's true.
don't know where I'll walk tomorrow. Usually I go somewhere a little further afield on Saturdays. Possibly Harbor Landing. I haven't been there for a while. Could rock, walk right out to the western edge of the city there. Walk along the prairie for a little bit. Just to show off what Saskatchewan really looks like. Away from the hand-planted trees of the city. I'm actually surprised how many people are around this morning. As it gets cooler, I expect that to tail off. Back in the spring when I first started doing it, there was still ice and snow around. I could have the whole path to myself. Gazebo, I performed there and been to a wedding there. Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's kind of the, the strangest pronunciation I heard was from a kid in a parking lot in the south when we were driving when I was a kid. He looked at our license plate and he said, Saskatchewan? Where's that? People who aren't from here tend to pronounce, pronounce it too clearly, Saskatchewan. But it's Saskatchewan. Good morning. That was my next door neighbor and his dog. Oh, your name. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got that right too. <laughs> It's a bit of a guess whenever these names pop up on here. Because it can come from anywhere in the world and the rules of pronunciation aren't necessarily what I would think they would be. But still, now you know how to pronounce Saskatchewan correctly. Just de emphasize to emphasize it, it's just Saskatchewan. Sometimes it's just Saskatchewan. It's almost like two syllables, Saskatchewan. And of course we came from Newfoundland, where the important thing is to say land and not Newfoundland. There's no Lund or Newfoundland. There's no Lund. It says land at the end of it. Newfoundland. All right, we come back to the underpass under the bridge. This path is clearly designed so that that tower is right at the end of it. As you walk, obelisk almost, you can call it. Nicely lit up by the sun this morning. And back through the mural underpass. It used to be the graffiti underpass, but hopefully this reduces that. songs about Saskatchewan. It's hard to rhyme. I did a show, directed a show many years ago called uh, Regina Revisited, which is all historical stuff. And one of the songs in it was Saskatchewan. Uh, how did it go? Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, there's no place like Saskatchewan. You sit and gaze across the plain and wonder why it never rains. Till Gabriel comes and blows his horn, then says the rain makes his sound, blows his sound, because it doesn't rhyme otherwise. As she's gone around, he must, Gabriel must come and make his sound or something like that. Blows his horn, doesn't work. That's one of them. I remember one from when I was a kid, because uh, there was something called Saskatchewan Homecoming, about 73, I think, and there was a song for that. Uh, I have heard the whistle. 
I have heard the whisper of your wheat fields blowing softly in the wind. And the warm heart of your people make me want to come back home to you again. Boo! Get set to welcome home your native son, Saskatchewan. Ah. That's what I remember of it. I think there was one for the Centennial too, but I did never learned that one. And in another show I directed, there was one about Saskatoon, written by somebody who had clearly never been to Saskatoon, because it was about downhill skiing, which we don't do in Saskatoon. Well, there's, there's, uh, not Blackstrap, but you can ski in the river valley, but still not exactly uh, what was implied in the song. Somebody just thought Saskatoon, Saskatchewan was a funny sound. Some New York songwriter banged it out without bothering to look to see what Saskatoon, Saskatchewan was actually like, but we had it in a show I wrote and directed called uh, As Time Goes By, A Love Story with Music and Ghosts a few years ago. A play with music as opposed to a musical because the music was all existing music. It wasn't written for the show. I've done two of those, written two of those, and they've both been well received. Okay, Davin School ahead of us. Around the corner, a few more houses, and I will be home. Yes, those sunflowers are going quickly, even without being frosted. I'm going to have to hire somebody to come and clean my yard. I have no interest in doing it. I've had somebody do it the last couple of years. I quite like it. Oh, snowshoe here. He's a fairly calm one too. There he goes. Decided maybe the other side of the street would be better than the side I'm on. Okay, I will stop here. So thanks so much for walking with me. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye for now.